Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever snapshot for the next version of Minecraft Java Edition, version 1.15, has been released. Here is Minecraft Snapshot 19W34A. Like I said, this is for Java Edition 1.15, a release that right now has neither a public release date nor an official theme. However, what we know from before is that the performance optimization and the quality improvement work from the Minecraft 1.14 dot releases is going to continue with this version. This version, however, comes with a brand new bug. The bug is a B. The B has been added to the snapshot as the focus of this snapshot with a lot of surrounding blocks and items. My name is Sly Slime, I'm here to guide you through all the B related features and all of the other ones. Let's get started with the bees. The bee is a neutral mob, has been added to the game, has five hearts of health. They spawn into the world inside of bee nest blocks that now generate in flower forests, in plains and in sunflower plains. Normally bees are not angry, but if you hit them or if you break their nest they will become angry. A bee can sting you and if it does it will leave its stinger stuck in you and eventually a bee that has stung will die. Being stung by a bee causes a poison effect. Killing a bee gives no loot. If there's rain and during the night, they will go back to their nest and disappear inside. There's a maximum of three bees per nest though, and if the nest is full when the bee arrives then it will wander until it finds a new nest that it can use. Bees really like flowers, if you're holding a flower it will follow you and using a flower on them it will put them into love mode and doing this with two bees can make bee babies. They also like flowers in block form, they will gather pollen from flowers on the ground. When they have enough pollen they will be dripping with it and go flying back to their home nest. And while they're carrying pollen on their way back to the nest they can accelerate growth of crops that it passes. If it is carrying pollen when it enters the nest it will increase the nest's level of honey. Available levels are 0 to 5 and when it's full it will be visibly dripping with honey. If you want to mess with a bee's nest then one way to calm the bees down is to place a campfire underneath the nest that will make them passive. You can interact with a full nest in two ways. One is by using a shear to get a honeycomb. Three honeycombs crafted with the planks will give you a beehive, and the beehive is like a crafted version of the bee's nest. The only way to get a bee's nest is to use silk touch, but a hive can be broken with a normal tool and picked back up. If you break a nest or a hive with a silk touch however, you will get the block including any bees that are inside of it at the moment. For all other intents and purposes, the hive works exactly like the nest. You can also use an empty bottle on a nest or a hive with five levels of honey and that will give you a honey bottle. Honey bottles are a new food item, you can drink them and they are exactly as filling as cooked mutton or cooked salmon. Honey bottles can also be used as a crafting ingredient, turning them into three pieces of sugar. When a bee returns to its nest it can leave information about flower locations in the nest and other bees that then arrive can use that information to find flowers for themselves. And finally in the creative menu of course there is now a new spawn egg for bees. Let us also talk about other changes though, there are other mob changes in this version. The hitbox of slimes is now correctly placed when they spawn and where any changes in their data cause them to change size. Foxes were having a hard time breeding that is fixed in this version and the villagers had a near infinite restocking ability in certain cases that has also been fixed. Another gameplay fix of note. Ghost blocks could remain on the client when you were mining with insta mining speed, that has been fixed in the snapshot. Let's talk about redstone, there are some new redstone functionality with the new blocks related to bees. You can use a redstone comparator on the nest or hive blocks to get a power level depending on its level of honey. There are also new interactions for dispensers, you can use a dispenser to interact with a hive or a nest both with shears and with bottles. In the case of the bottle, an empty bottle inside of the dispenser will be filled with honey and that then remains inside of the dispenser. Another change to dispensers with bottles is that if you have a dispenser with an empty bottle inside of it pointed into a water source block that will now fill the bottle with water. World generation changes. The obsidian pillars in the end were missing some of their blocks, that is fixed and they will now generate with the correct shape again. And some of the leaves in plains villages had the persistent flag set, so even if you cut down the tree they would hang around. 
and some doors in some village structures were marked as being closed despite actually being open. Item fixes in this version. Items with the durability would sometimes get the wrong data when you use them in creative mode. For instance, this could mean that a bow used in creative mode would show the wrong custom item with certain texture packs. And explorer maps were being generated to already explored structures. That has been fixed in this version, but do note that the fix requires newly generated terrain. User interface changes. Items can now be shift clicked into crafting slots. And items in custom recipes can now be shift clicked into a stone cutter. And while riding a horse, you can now shift click items back and forth between the inventory and the hotbar. Blaze powder when shift clicked into a brewing stand will now automatically go to the fuel slot. And in the server list, you can once again rearrange the rows by holding down the shift button and using the arrow keys. Sounds in this version. There are of course a range of new sounds related to the bees and the beehives and the nests. Bees have a sound loop when they're just flying around. And a different sound when they are aggressive. Bees have sounds for being hurt, for stinging, and for dying as well as for pollination. There's also sounds for a bee entering a hive or a nest, exiting a hive or a nest, as well as the hive or nest itself, the hive or nest dripping with honey, and a sound for sharing the hive. There's also a new sound for drinking a bottle of honey. If you craft multiple items by shift clicking, that no longer plays multiple sounds in looms and in cartography tables. And the sound of breaking a block used to be affected by the friendly creatures volume slider rather than the blocks one. That has been fixed in this snapshot. Some rendering changes in this version. There are many under the hood changes. You might not see them immediately, but work is underway to modernize the game's rendering engine. If you're following some of the developers, you might have heard this being referred to as the codename Blaze3D. And while the work of that is certainly far from done, some of it is included in the snapshot, so that is where the changes come from. This also means that OpenGL version 2.0 is now required, which means that some old hardware, especially older laptops with Intel integrated graphics cards, are no longer supported and a rendering fix for the dragon egg, which can no longer cause x-ray glitches when you place it on top of certain locks like cactus. For stability and performance, there was a bug with region files sometimes breaking that could cause chunks to swap places or even being deleted en masse, and that has been fixed in this version. Finally, some technical changes, starting with loot tables. There's a new function called copy underscore state, which copies state properties from the dropped block when used in a block loot table to the block state tag in the dropped item. That has a parameter called block, which is the block ID that is the source of the properties, and a new parameter called properties, which is a list of property names, and all of those properties must be present on the block for this function to work. In other technical changes, there is a new entity, it's Minecraft colon B, I'll leave you to explore the data of that by yourself. There are new blocks, they are B underscore nest and B underscore hive, that also has a data with a beast field and that has stored entities that are inside of the nest or hive and will eventually spawn. There are new items as well, honey underscore bottle and honeycomb, as well as new particles, dripping underscore honey, falling underscore honey, falling underscore nectar, and landing underscore honey. And those were all the changes in the first snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.15 19W34A. Do keep in mind that this is a snapshot, they are less stable, so if you want to try it out, be careful, make sure you do it on a backup of your world or on a separate test world. If you want to try it but you don't know how to, then click on the link on the video right now. It'll take you to a tutorial video about how to get and play a Minecraft snapshot. And that's gonna be all for me for this time. I hope you found this update video useful, and if you did, please help me out in return, leave a like and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news, then please subscribe to my channel, where I do update videos for every new snapshot, pre-release or release of Minecraft. 
My name is Sly Splime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.